called The Wisdom Traditions and the Great Work. And the second Spirit Matters was One Earth Community. And the last one that we had was uh, actually Elders and Youth in the Web of Life. So one of the things that we have is a deep interest in spirituality, social justice, earth justice, and uh, the other thing that's characteristic of us, and we really pride ourselves, is that almost all of our gatherings, we have all four directions with us. Um, the, the Spirit Matters gathering, uh, both in 2004 and 2007, we had people from Africa, from uh, India, from South America, from Brazil, uh, so all four directions were here. And um, I have to tell you that, um, Maladoma, that uh, even in the, uh, the 2004, we were trying to get in touch with your people because you, we wanted you here. So we, we go back along with you. So it's, it's really uh, a great, great pleasure that you've come. With. You know, we've been waiting for you. Let me say that. <laughs> That's the truth. Uh, and, and now you're here. Um, it's, um, I uh, came here to Falcha and Slancha. Uh, for my people, the Irish, uh, this is a thousand welcomes and the most healthy uh, beef that you can have. And uh, I brought my ancestors with you. They are they're, they're kind of warriors. Uh, and so you're in safe hands, plus with your own and others. Okay, so here again, welcome. I'd like to uh, give you an offering, which is done uh, in, uh, with First Nations traditions. And uh, it's a medicine bag. Uh, from First Nations and uh, tobacco offering as a gift to you. <coughs> and um, just uh, briefly, uh, before uh, we, we open up with, with a, a, a blessing, I just say that uh, this was a wonderful book that I read. This is one of the reasons why we didn't have, uh, uh, we wanted him in the 2004 conference of Water and the Spirit, Ritual, Magic, and the Initiation to the Life of an African Shaman. And uh, just the first, uh, the first paragraph. My name is Maladoma. It means roughly be friends with the stranger and enemy. And that's been his life, uh, his life work. And he, you'll see that he does it very, very well. Uh, this is Turtle Island. Uh, we, are in, we are on the, the grounds of Turtle Island, on the grounds of First Nation people. So my good friend Michael Gladu of Cree Nation is going to give an opening. Uh, 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 invocation, and then Leslie will, will introduce Melodoma.
gratitude and excitement about the simple blessing of being part of something this grand. We live in a world in which uh, everything is being commodified uh, to the point where uh, there is an attachment uh, of value associated to even the thing that should be associated with value. Um, and yet, in the process of that, things of, uh, let's just call it things that are invaluable tend to be ignored. Uh, the value of the gifts that each one of us represent to everyone else. Uh, the genie that is uh, in, in, in us waiting to be engaged, to, to be, uh, to go to work for us. Not work in the sweaty fashion, <coughs> but the kind of labor that is uh, construction from monument of love, uh, the kind that uh, we can mirror, uh, the kind that when we look at it, we can see ourselves being so grand that we're quite impressive. Uh, there are no words to, uh, to express the human genius, uh, and therefore there is not a way in which you can definitively capture uh, this sense in such a way that you resolve everything once and for all. But it is also true that we do have the gifts of words, the kind that changes things around, the kind that shifts reality. And so we have to be able, at, at any given moment, every day, to wonder what is, what is the nature of the lexicon that we are using? Mm. Are this, the words that we tend to recycle within ourselves contributing to our expansion or to our contraction? Are we trapped in a merry-go-round vocabulary of self-depreciation while perhaps the forces that have fed us that kind of vocabulary are enjoying uh, a certain kind of prosperity? Um, we have, therefore, yes, to use, to, to use the gift that the answer gave us. The capacity for discernment, the capacity to see behind the cosmetic painting of beauty uh, towards that which was beautiful unto itself, needing no repair, needing no pain. And if that is possible, then we can see the meaning of what is contained in the subject of this evening, um, that we are purposeful people who are here for an extremely grandiose reason. And any person that would tell us that we don't have uh, something to give to this world, we really have to take offense at that. And if we have a shrine to our ancestors, we should go report them to the ancestors. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's not simple. Um, I really forgot the question that we raised uh, in the course of this intervention. Uh, <laughs> I have a short pan of memory. Uh, however, I hope that in talking randomly, I'll end up answering that. <laughs> <laughs> I was drawn to uh, really uh, addressing the issue of uh, you know the notion of uh, elders, you know, mentor, uh, and the kind of responsibility that uh, uh, we have toward our youth. Uh, 
concept of citizenry that uh, is laid upon us and uh, the manner in which our identity is more or less assigned to us. Uh, you know, sitting here and hearing the siren going on and wondering, uh, are they going to make things better? Or are they screaming because there's, not, there's yet another opportunity exercise some kind of grandiosity. Uh, I realize that we all have an assigned identity. <coughs> you know, uh, when you say Canadian or American, uh, what's that mean? What's the significance of that? Uh, I was simply uh, borrowing uh, or showing sign of allegiance to a man-made creation that wants us to live in certain ways so that we are predictable. Mm -hmm. And in so doing, I will actually instinctively, or perhaps even unbeknown to ourselves, responding to a hidden fear within us that tells us if we don't do that, then we're going to come up against a monster, against something that's going to crush us. But well, we've got to realize sometimes the very <coughs> gift that we carry inside of us is much bigger than the notion of belonging assigned to us that pertains to a certain locality. I don't know if I'm making sense of it. All I'm, all I'm saying is that uh, we're all children of this earth. And so far we haven't figured out a way to get the hell out of here. Uh, we're all stuck here. Uh, the only way out is by rejoining the ancestors. You know, we have some grandiose thing that we call space program. Uh, See what that means. You know how to get out of here. Uh, what we're being invited to do is to try to uh, narrow the space between each other. And if we can't make the space between each other a sacred one, and in doing so, this place can become very close to a heaven. Uh, I'll call it, according to the biblical way, a garden of Eden. Any other thinking might transform this place into something not too far from a penal colony. Uh, where we're all trapped and able to escape. Uh, and having to figure out all these space programs, as if we're trying to figure out where to get the hell out of here. We're always finding out that we're all subject to the gravitation of stuck here. And so living our purpose is unleashing the genie in, our, uh, in us from the prison house of this narrow-minded definition of ourself that satisfies certain kind of predictability that is necessary government. <laughs> uh, to be transient uh, requires that we figure out a way to address those of us who have let their body go and who are now present among us in a way that cannot be regulated. Maybe we can learn from them how to deregulate ourselves. Uh, 
anyone who's growing up tend to show sign of wildness. From the time we entered this world, we tended to be extremely busy. You know, after you reach your forties or your fifties, if you want to find out what level your energy at, try to follow a two-year-old. <laughs> try to see how long you're gonna last. <laughs> This exuberance of energy that will come into this world is, is directly connected to our purpose, our gene, and the excitement with which we want to bring it out. Mm -hmm. Censorship, when it comes under various forms, eventually contributes to turning out the, the bright light, uh, the, the burst uh, with which we want to express ourselves in this life. And this is why, um, if there's anything we can serve that is really uh, uh, uplifting, it is indeed uh, those of us who have joined the, the rank of the old parts. Uh, <laughs> just uh, be those who can who learn to hold the space. Uh, be less of a director and more of a space keeper. Because the truth is, if we know how to hold the space, the young one would know how to operate it. Yes. <laughs> uh, that's why it that is. We don't want to become yet uh, another set of control free, um, you know, masquerading as you know mentors, elders. Um, Recreating the kind, the same old hierarchy under different name. That's what we say, same shit, different toilet. But the point is, the world has become, therefore, a perpetual repetition of an addictive methodology that is rooted in the, the magnetism for failure. Yes. What that means, as long as, in the end, it doesn't work, so that we can start fresh. Um, then we can make dysfunction looks like function. Uh, and when function start to creep in, uh, blame function for a new dysfunction. Uh, indeed, our genius is that creative. That's why we can take a perfect, perfectly operating situation and demonize it perfectly. <laughs> <laughs> and this is the kind of thing we must be more afraid of than whether we know enough to harness the kind of energy that will bring harmony in our communities. There is enough intelligence, enough genius to manifest just about everything. It is whether we have checked ourselves deeply enough to verify that it is really what we want. <laughs> understand the impact of something we call a society addicted to scarcity and its um, psychological underpinning in the life of people who are growing up full with exuberant abundance in them, only to be told that this is not okay. Uh, the philosophy of capitalism is not based on abundance, it's based on scarcity. It's based on making that which is abundant so thin that then they can put a meter and charge everyone. That's why it's even following a biblical statement that those who don't have, that which they have will be taken from them. Today, those who don't have end up paying more than those who have. This is how this thing works. And when we talk about uh, recession, it is not recession for the folks like you and I. It's something else going on. Because where did all that one go? Did it fly out into space? Did it blow out? It's still here. Why is that somehow we're supposed to believe that it is not here? So that then they tell us, better cut this off. We better take a little bit out of your plate because, you know, it's a recession. <laughs> and you have to believe it. So we have to realize that sometimes um, it's not even necessary to finger point that, you know. 
It's it's just it's just as good. Tell the person I'll be right with you. Uh, you know, I'm not rejecting what you're saying. Uh, I got something to do. <laughs> <laughs> and if the person, after a few days or a few months, tends to think that you know I've been waiting, you say this thing is taking me a little more time. <laughs> is going to realize they're waiting for Godot. <laughs> so they have to move on. There comes a time when all we have to do is to recognize that uh, we cannot wait for some kind of uh, specter of authority to come and fix things for us so that we can be comfortable. It's not our capacity to vote that makes the difference. Uh, and besides, it's someone else that set it up that way. And if you want, you had it your way, things will flow totally differently. It's just that a game is being created by someone else, and we're all, by so-called law, supposed to play by it. In the end, we wonder why. Uh, we keep choosing this person to lead us. Oh, uh, who, in, who indeed leads us to hell? The point becomes simple. That we are the leader we wait for. We are the one we should vote for. We are the one we should, we should invest in creating the space and in using the space that most suits. In that context, it is a good idea to, uh, to find a way to lean back toward the wisdom of all. Uh, we think the world is growing better. I'm not sure about it. Uh, we think the things that are uh, changing, and because they are changing, somehow they're doing so so naturally that we just have to follow. <coughs> well, that's dangerous. Follow simply means you have nothing else to do. Uh, to follow means that something that is much more powerful than you <coughs> is putting you on tow and dragging you uh, like a like a train car, perhaps going places that you have no interest in going, and you're going to go anyway because that's the reality. Uh, so all I'm saying is that the wisdom of the ancestors wants us. To redefine the notion of elder in our community uh, in, in radical contrast with old people. If we don't have elder, we're going to have to have old people. And, um, and therefore create a whole industry in order to, to suck the last pieces of juice out of them. Um, call them retirement home or assisted living. You see how creative we get. Um, uh, the elder, on the other hand, uh, should be the one that gives us, the, the, the younger generation, the chance to look forward uh, to the kind of odd-looking wisdom that they are embodying. Uh, by the very